Hi everyone. So today we're talking about something called radical notation. And um, the word radical has a lot of different meanings, but in math, radical is talking about this symbol right here. Now many of you are going to look at that symbol and think, oh, that's a square root. You're right, it is a square root, but there are lots of other types of roots besides square roots. Um, you could have a third root, a fourth root, a fifth root. So um, this symbol is called a radical, and that's how you indicate that you're taking a root of some kind. By the way, my children are running around behind me, so you might hear them at some point. So what I'm hoping to show you here is that everything we're doing today is stuff you already know how to do. This is just a different type of notation. We talked in the last chapter that a power of one-half was really the same as doing a square root. So x to the one-half power is really the same thing as the square root of x. Think about, like, if you did 25 to the one-half power, that means split 25 into two equal factors. Well, 5 is the square root of 25, okay? So a power of one-half is the same thing as a square root. And that's what we call it, as a square root when it's split into two pieces. That's probably the one you're most familiar with. But there are also cube roots. So if you look at this power of one-third, that's the same thing as doing what's called a cube root. And it looks just like a square root, except it's got this three kind of floating around there. We call that a cube root. And that's the same as splitting a number into three equal pieces. And then when you have a power like one-fifth, um, that's just what we call a fifth root of x. So these ones start losing their fancy names. Really, square root and cube root are the only ones with um, special names. From here on out, we just call them the, the fourth root or the fifth root or the tenth root or whatever. Okay. Down here at the bottom, you'll just want to copy down the definition of what it means to be a root of x. So when I say nth root, that could be a fourth root, a fifth root, an eighth root, any kind of root. Um, so the, the nth root of x is the same thing as x to the power of 1 over that number. So when you have a number sitting out here, it's the same thing as having a fraction exponent 1 over whatever that number is. Okay? So what happens when you have something like this where it's not just 1 over a number? You remember this from last chapter, x to the power of 4 thirds. Well, what we would do with this... If you think back to last chapter, we would write it as x to the one-third to the power of four. Well then, x to the one-third we could write as the cube root of x, and that would still be to the power of four. So I could rewrite it that way, or I'm also allowed to just write it as the cube root of x to the fourth power. I could take that 4 and put it down inside. Okay? So I want you to see here that this is equivalent to this. And I want you to pay um, special attention to the placement of the numbers. So um, this fraction, the top number is on the inside, the bottom number is on the outside. And that's the thing I really want you to get, is with these fractions, the bottom number always tells you what root you're taking. Okay. So down here you have a very mathy theorem that you should try to copy down, this giant thing. Um, and as you're copying it, I want you to see that really this is just backwards from what we wrote up here. Up here we started with it as an exponent, as a fraction exponent, and ended with it in a radical. This is just showing that if you were to write it in a radical form, you could put that m on the outside, just like we did here, and then you could also take those numbers and just stack them like a fraction. Again, what I want you to see is that this number on the inside gets stacked on top and number on the outside gets put on the bottom. So let's suppose I actually wanted you to solve one of these. I actually wanted you to find the fifth root of 32. You already know how to do this too um, because the fifth root of 32 is really just 32 to the power of one-fifth. And then from last chapter, that means break 32 down into five factors. Let's see, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So 32 to the 1 fifth would just equal 2, which is the same thing as the fifth root of 32. Same thing, cube root of 125. 
would be 125 to the one-third power. And then I would break that up into three pieces, 5 and 25, 5 and 5. So the Q root of 125 is just equal to 5. So this is the exact same stuff as what we were doing in the last chapter, just a different way of writing it. It's a new notation to get used to. So when you see directions like this, estimate, which means I don't need an exact answer, nearest hundredth tells me my answer is going to be decimals, I hope this screams out to you to use your calculator. Okay? So we're going to type these into the calculator, and I'm going to, um, I can't really show you here how to type it in, but I'm going to try to explain it to you, and hopefully you can follow. So in your calculator, if you're trying to type in the fifth root of 4,829, start by typing a 5, just a regular 5. And then you're going to look for a button that looks like a square root symbol, but it has an X on top of it. It looks like that. And on the graphing calculators, you can find it by going to the math menu. Okay, and the math menu is over on the left-hand side underneath the alpha key. There's a button that says math. And I think it's like the fifth option down, I think. Okay, I don't have a graphing calculator here at home to check. But I think it's the fifth one down. Um, but it's a button, or it's a... It's on that list, and it looks just like this. It's X with a square root symbol. And then you're going to type in your number, 4829. I would go ahead and try that right now on whatever calculator you have available to you so you can make sure you're doing it right. It should come out to 5.45. Okay. Now this one, this next one, is just a square root. Regular old run-of-the-mill square root. So this one you don't even need a fancy button for. This one just comes out to be 3.87. So for this next one, I would type in 4 and then find that X root button. By the way, if you're not on a graphing calculator, if you're on like a standard scientific calculator, um, the one I'm using right now, it's up above the caret key. Again, on the left-hand side, you'll have to hit second and then the button that looks like this. Um, but either way, you're looking for this kind of thing, a square root with an X on top of it. This one comes out to be exact. This one comes out to be exactly seven. Okay, so that's all you have to do for those ones. All right, so simplifying. Um, simplify means just condense it as much as you can. So think about a few minutes ago when we were first looking at expressions like this and we talked about the placement of these numbers. If I wrote this as an exponent, it would be x to the power of, and remember the inside number came from the top of the fraction and the outside number came from the bottom. So this is really x to the power of 8 over 4. Well, 8 over 4 is equal to 2, so this is really just x squared. So this is all about just knowing how to stack the numbers correctly. So for this next one, I would make this y to the power of 18 over 3. Again, inside number over outside number, top, bottom. And 18 over 3 is equal to 6. Now, I gave you two examples here that came out to be nice, happy whole numbers. Um, if they came out to be a fraction, if it came out like 4 over 6, I would want you to reduce that fraction. Okay, so don't divide it and make it a decimal, but like 4 over 6 would reduce to 2 thirds. And one last thing that looks a whole lot scarier than it really is. It says rewrite each radical using rational exponents. So I just want to write this as x to the power of something. Well, with these radicals, remember that if it doesn't have a number right here, it's really a square root. And so the number that should be there is a 2. That's hard for a lot of students because you're used to knowing that when something's not written, it's a 1. Okay, but with square roots, there's no such thing as a first root. So when it's not written, it's a 2. Well, if I took just that, if I took just the square root of x and wrote it as an exponent, that would be x to the power of 1 half. Okay, so that took care of that. Now I've got the sixth root. Well, the sixth root is really the same as a power of 1 sixth. Then all you have to do is combine these fractions with multiplying. So this would become x to the power of 1 over 12. Okay? On the bottom here, 
Notice that I'm starting with x to the ninth and raising that to the power of first, this would be a one third. So remember, all these roots, all these numbers out here, um, are going to be fractions. It's going to be like one over that number. So the three would become a one third. Remember, this one that's not written is really a two, so then that would be to the power of one half. And then this one would be a power of one fifth. And again, I know that looks terrifying, but um, just remember, you're just multiplying all of these together. And I would write that 9 as 9 over 1, and then you can just multiply all the tops together. So that's 9 times 1 times 1 times 1, so that's x to the power of 9. And on the bottom, 1 times 3 times 2 times 5 is 30. And then I want you to think about it. Does 9 over 30 reduce at all? sure does, it becomes x to the power of 3 over 10. Now, for this example, it wanted you to write it using rational exponents, which is exactly what we did. Rational exponents means like a fraction exponent. On your homework assignment, it tells you to write it as a single radical, which means you want to write it like in this form, but with only one radical instead of two or three. So, Something like this, x to the power of 1 12th, if we were going to write that as a radical, it would be a 12th root of x. Okay? Remember, this number goes on the outside. This number would go on the inside. You could write a 1 there, but you don't really have to. Um, for this one, this would be the 10 means it's a 10th root of x to the 3rd power. So on your homework, that's how you would leave it, okay? On, on this, though, the way the directions were written, this would have been our final answer. So totally depends on, you know, what the directions say. Um, oh, and by the way, sorry, on this example, um, I believe on your notes, that's a Y. It doesn't make any difference in terms of the problem, but didn't want, you to throw that, didn't want that to throw you off. So, okay, so now to your homework. Let me give you a little bit of advice for your homework. So the homework assignment that goes with this lesson is Lesson Master 8 b It should be the first one in your packet, and you are expected to do the whole thing, but I'm going to give you some advice on the different sections. So first of all, problem number one comes from the very first slide we did today. Well, first besides the title. And it's down at the bottom, there's the definition of an nth root. And I just want you to know that on the worksheet, they use M... But on ours, when we wrote it, we used x. So m is really the same thing as x. So you'll have to use that to answer that question number one. But it really is just word for word that definition. Um, 2 through 7 are ones that you could technically make factor trees for and, and work out yourself. I think we've done enough of the factor tree stuff. Um, so I'm okay with you using a calculator. And then 8 through 11 are ones that you have to use a calculator. So really, 2 through 11 are just plugging into a calculator. Okay? So 2 through 11, straighten your calculator. Um, 12 through 15 are like the last slide we did, okay, where we had the multiple radicals and we wrote it out as a power and then multiplied them all together. So 12 through 15 are like that. And then 16 through 19 are like the second to last slide. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind um, when you're working through that assignment. I do want you to do the back. I will tell you that the problems on the back are easier than they look. So I want you to make a legitimate attempt at doing those on your own. We will probably go over some of them in class, but... I really want you to try them yourself first because they're not nearly as hard as they look like they are. Okay? So, Lesson Master 8-4 um, tonight, and we will go over it in class on Wednesday.